Hey there, I'm Mark and today I got 5 more useful tips and tricks for Affinity Photo. I post 2 tutorials like this every week, so please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Alright, let's get started. Let me just jump into Affinity Photo for desktop. I'm using the Mac OS version, as you can see here. Alright, my first tip is to use insertion mode. If I just draw a new shape or use the brush, it will always show at the top of my layer panel. But if I use insertion mode over here, and now I try to draw a new shape, this new shape will appear inside the selected shape. So we can kind of insert that object into already existing layer. So this new layer will appear as the child layer for the selected layer. It's super handy if you plan to add texture of the brush. So if you select the brush, let's just select some more artistic brush with texture, maybe this one, and then you turn on this mode so let's just pick the color and turn on insertion mode for my brush. Click here. As you can see, it's turned on right now. So if I start painting inside, it will automatically create a new pixel layer for me. And this layer is a child layer for the shape. Let's change the color. All right, as you can see, my brush is painting only inside this shape because we press insertion mode inside before we start using this tool. So that's really handy because you don't need to manually drag those layers inside other layers as child layers. All right, second useful tip is lasso intersect mode. So if I select this quickly and then I want only part of the selection, I can use my lasso or freehand tool in intersect mode. All right, so be sure you select intersect mode. And if I make additional selection now, I will only get this intersecting part over here. So that's really handy if you want to make some very specific selection like this. So if you already got one selection going on and then you want to limit that selection to only one part, this is perfect tool to do that. So let's select here. So I'll create new selection here with this lasso tool. And now I want only part of this, change to intersect mode and grab the part of this selection. That's really handy. That's our tip number two. All right, how about tip number three? Icon and text. This is really handy for beginners. We can make our interface more beginners friendly by adding text. You can see text in my interface. By default, you got only icons. So let me just change that. Right click, icon only. This is default mode. But you can easily add description by turning on the text and icon. Just right click at the top bar and you can add text to it. So you will know what is what. All right, tip number four. Erased blending mode. There's a special blending mode that may erase layers below. Take a look. Let me just draw additional shape here. And if I change the blending mode for this shape right now, here, from normal to erase at the very bottom, he is now erasing everything, all layers below. It's why I can see white color here. But if I drag it inside other layer, like this, make it as child, it will be only erasing the parent layer above. So I can make a nice hole in another shape and I still got editable shape inside here. So that's really handy because we can use this method with editable text. Let's try. Let's type something here. And now we don't need to use a geometry tool to make a hole here and convert our text to path, we can simply change the blending mode and then drag it in as a child layer. And now our text is erasing the layer above the parent layer. 
and it's still editable. I can change the text right now. So that's really handy. Keep in mind there's a special erase blending mode. All right, let's move to the last tip for today. There's a special separated mode that may be a very handy feature for veterans here because you will jump back a few years into the old style of interfaces. So let's quit the full screen. I need to quit the full screen, otherwise I cannot select that. All right, and now if I go to my window, I can click on this special mode. And from now on, all of my panels are separate windows, so I can move them whatever I want. I can even have multiple artboards open, multiple panels. So that's how we operate a few years back, if you remember that, especially on Mac OS, everything was like floating window like this. So if you like this style, you want to go back to it. That's the way how you can do it. Also, you can customize it. It's very interesting if you've got additional screen as well, because you can place this stuff all around. Really cool mode if you want all of your panels as floating windows. All right, so that was our last tip. Tip before was all about erasing. Then we talk about icons and text. Before that, I mentioned last, so intersect. And the very first tip was all about intersection itself. All right, guys, thank you for watching. This was the second video from this series. So if you didn't watch the first one just yet, consider checking that one out. Maybe I will drop the link to it in a comment below. Thank you and see you in my next tutorial. Bye.